gentlemen, head to your race cars. It's go time! Go time. Go time. Three, two, one, go! I win! John and welcome to the So and So Show. This month we are talking all about integrity. Mm -hmm. When you have integrity, that means you can be trusted. Really? You think you can just come out right out of the gate and announce a big spoiler just like that? Uh, yeah, I think I just did. <sighs> well, tell me more. Oh. Who do you think is the most integritous person you know? That is not a word. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, fine. Um, probably my barber. Uh, you sure about that? Hey! You know what? I think I know a better one. Uh, what? Your grandma? Nope. Your mailman? No. Uh, a pit stop worker. A pit stop worker? Yeah, yeah. You know the pit really? crew for race car drivers? The yeah. car rolls into the pit stop and, you know, the crew super quickly makes adjustments to the car, like refueling it or replacing the tires. Uh, you know what? I, I think you're right. They do need a lot of integrity. Yeah, right? You've got to be able to trust them. Mm. If they didn't have integrity, they could ruin the race mm. or even get the driver hurt. <laughs> they keep you safe, and they help make your dreams come true. It's true. It's so true. I want to be one. Really? I think pit crew workers have to be super strong, so. What? Ah! I'm strong, but I, I don't like the smell of car exhaust. Oh, well, there goes that dream. No, 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 no. I can, um, oh, 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 what if there were, uh, oh, a pit crew for life? You know, everyday moments that need help, assistance, integrity. I'm not sure about that. Oh, you will be, my friend. You will be. Now what else needs my help? Uh, maybe we should just leave things the way they are. Never! <laughs> the door! Yeah! It's Bible story time with Kellen! Woo! No! Can you smell that? Hey guys! Hey Kellen! You know what I like about you, Kellen? Your integritous. Thanks, but that's not a word. Still? Okay, fine. But I see where you're going, and I like it. So what do you have for us today, Kellen? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today is all about fruit. You guys like apples, bananas, oranges? Yeah, definitely. The only way you get fruit is because it grows on a fruit tree. When Jesus was on earth, a lot of the people he met and talked to were farmers and people who knew all about growing fruit trees. So, a few times, that's what Jesus decided to talk to them about. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 6, we read that Jesus says, A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. You can tell each tree by the kind of fruit it bears. People do not pick figs from thorns and they don't pick grapes from bushes. That makes sense, right? Apples only grow on apple trees, and oranges only grow on orange trees, and only good, healthy trees can produce good, healthy fruit. 
Now, Jesus taught this lesson about fruit trees so he could actually teach us about people. He went on to say, a good man says good things. These come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. So people can be like fruit trees. What does that look like? Well, imagine someone who is good. Jesus said a good person has good things stored in their heart. It's like they're a healthy tree. And just like good fruit comes from a healthy tree, good things come out of someone with a healthy heart. Things like kind words, encouragement, and honesty. But there's another kind of person. When a tree isn't healthy, it won't produce good fruit. In the same way, Jesus said that evil things come out of someone with an unhealthy heart. Things like lies, insults, and hateful words. So, which kind of person would you rather be? Someone who is good, right? Well, then that's the kind of fruit you should bear. You should actually be kind and good. Now, I get it. Sometimes that's more easily said than done. But it's a good thing that Jesus had more to say about the matter. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. So picture this with me. Picture a big vine growing in a garden. There are so many branches connected to the vine. And some of those branches are bearing fruit and others aren't. Now imagine that Jesus is this big vine and that God is the gardener. Jesus said, God cuts off every branch joined to me that does not bear fruit. He trims every branch that does bear fruit so that it will bear even more fruit. So God takes care of the vine and the branches that are attached to it. Remember, the vine is Jesus and the branches Jesus was talking about are you and me. Next, Jesus says, remain joined to me, just as I also remain joined to you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain joined to the vine. In that same way, you can't bear fruit unless you remain joined to me. So as long as the branches stay connected to the vine, they'll continue to bear more and more fruit. Did you catch that? You don't have to try to have good fruit on your own. In fact, Jesus says that it is impossible for you to do it by yourself. But when you lean on Jesus, when you stay connected to him in relationship and obey his commands to love one another, you will bear good fruit. Things like love, kindness, peace, and my favorite, joy. Jesus believes in this so much that he kept going, telling his disciples again, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. This is an amazing promise from Jesus. He doesn't say you might produce fruit. He says you will. Then Jesus added, when you bear a lot of fruit, it brings glory to my Father. It shows that you are my disciples. And just like a branch getting nutrients from the vine, when we stay connected to Jesus, we get the love and nutrients we need to have healthy hearts that produce good fruit. That is beautiful. It really is. You know, it's helpful to learn that the way to have a healthy heart and good fruit is by staying connected to Jesus. Exactly. Jesus never leaves us and we can always be connected to him. We can receive his love in our hearts, ask him to help us, and follow his example of how to love people well. That's amazing. Thanks, Kellen. Anytime. See ya. Bye, Kellen. You know, I wonder what kind of tree people would see me as. Well, hopefully a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, instead of an apple or orange tree, would people describe me as a kindness tree or a joy tree? I think you can have a lot of good types of fruit, oh. right? but that's a good thought. Uh, reveal the question. <laughs> 
How do you want people to describe you? Yeah, do you want to be described like a, a pit crew member, helpful and trustworthy? Or perhaps as someone who is patient and kind. Yeah, or funny or generous. Yeah, there's lots of examples of what fruit could look like. It all comes down to your actions. Yeah, the way you act reflects who you are. So it's good to choose actions that are true to you. Yeah, and who Jesus helps you to be. Yes. Think about it, talk to somebody, and we'll see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this was the So and So Show. Yeah. Ooh, hello. Yep, I could not. I got something for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game? Sort of. I like But it. it's also life. Is it the game of life? No. All right. What am I? A statue? No, 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 no. What kind of tree am oh, I? Oh. I got a very good fruit, right? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Uh, palm tree? No. Um, I do have palms, though. Oh, good. Yeah, but I'm I was close. Tree. I'm not a palm tree. Uh, pear? No. Pear tree? No. Um, you know it's a metaphor, right? You're not actually a tree. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did it! I'm an apple tree! Where did that? Yeah, lie. I knew I loved apples. See, look at that. Go! How are you doing oh, this? Oh, and a banana! You I got a banana! Uh, uh, what's a metaphor? Is that the one with Azer-like?